Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Joe Schmidt has announced his Wallaby sides to take on the Springboks this weekend in Brisbane, Fortress Brisbane, the Suncorp Stadium, where the box last won in 2013. It will be a sold out crowd and uh, a very interesting uh, side being selected by the Wallabies with uh, quite a few key players missing. No Atene Tupo, no Marikai Corbetti, no Nick White, for example, uh, no uh, Fraser McWright. So uh, a very injury hit Wallaby side have named a side which will be captained by Alan Alatoa. Still some very good players in the side, the likes of a, a James Slipper coming off the bench with 123 tests to his name. Hunter Pasami in the centers is a very, very uh, talented player. He will partner Len Iketal. We've seen the form of the likes of uh, of Tom Wright, for example, um, Rob Valentini on, on the flanks as a solid player. So it's a very good Wallaby side, but um, definitely missing a bit of star power. Whether it'll be enough to beat the box, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but uh, it'll still be a tall task for the Spring Marks, who do not have a good record in the stadium, and uh, they very much want to try and put that record straight. Before you look at uh, the team, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. This is how uh, the Wallabies do line up. In the front row, it will be um, Isaac Kalia, who will get his fourth uh, opportunity in a Wallaby shirt, next to Matt Faisler, um, who uh, played quite a lot against Wales. Um, still very new to the Wallaby side. So, for example, you look at those two players. Combined, they have 10 tests compared to the 70 tests by Captain Alan Alato. Like, you have an opportunity to say hello to Ibn Etzebeth. We always we all remember what happened last year. Or oh, last time, for example, these two teams did clash uh, over in Australia we, and, that, and that big sort of fight between them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if anything like that um, potentially sort of uh, comes up this weekend. Um, uh, we look at the rest of the side. A very interesting second row in Nick Frost and Luckin Salakai Loto, um, who we thought might have been uh, potentially on, on the, the radar, given the fact that he was in the press conference uh, earlier this week. Um, it is Rob Valentini in the number six jersey. And then watch out for a debutant, Carlo Tizzano. Um, he has been described as a flank with a few screws loops. Um, very, very exciting player. Quick around the park and... Um, uh, going to be very uh, apt replacement for, for Fraser McWright. Um, they're very much looking to, to to target the breakdowns. I think that's quite clear when you play against the box. You have to try and slow the breakdowns. You have to try and create a turnover ball. And um, uh, Joe Schmidt actually describes his honor as the perfect player to play for the spring box, saying that we just felt that Carlo would suit the combination that we picked in the back row and in the second row and what best complement that Really, he's such a good young man, and we're really excited about watching him get underway in 48 hours. His energy is relatively positive, more than abrasive, but he fights for everything, Carlo, and that's what first ca uh, caught the eye. He's quite dynamic compared to around the breakdown, and I think in the context of losing Fraser, we needed someone who could bring element of Fraser's game, but probably not all of them. That is why we are picking Fraser before, but it's a great opportunity for Carlo. And then uh, Harry Wilson, the very abrasive Harry Wilson, in at number eight over there. 13 tests, somebody likes to run it hard and straight, He'll be very important in terms of physicality uh, this weekend. If we look at the halfback pairing, Jake Gordon will partner Nola Lucia, who's been once again being backed by Joe Smith. We have seen Ben Donaldson. There were rumors that he might start uh, not in the 23, in fact, uh, which I think is the right decision. I think uh, Nola Lucia is their best option at 10, given the fact that Carter Gordon has made that move to rugby league. Uh, Jake Gordon's a nice player as well. So I think it's a solid halfback pairing. I do think they'll miss the experience of Nick White. Um, Tate McDermott on the deputizing for the number nine on the bench. And an exciting backline. You know, Filippo uh, Duggano, we saw how uh, lethal he was against Wales. Andrew Kellaway, his, his experience, he's been around there. Tom Wright with that phenomenal individual try, for example, against, uh, against Wales. So he's uh, played with a lot of confidence. And then a very good centre pairing of Hunter Basami and Len Iketau. And in a side which doesn't have as much experience, for example, as like of the Springboks, uh, those two players, you know, just short of 30 caps themselves, very accomplished players. Off the base, this is where there's very little um, experience. I think there's about 175, 180 caps on the bench. And Tate McDermott and James Slipper are, are, are responsible for about 170 of them. Um, it is that uh, that ridiculous. Uh, so if we go through Josh Nasser with his third cap this weekend, James Slipper, 136 caps to his name. Zane Nongol, the young tight end uh, with six tests. Jeremy L um, Williams will make his fourth appearance. Luke Reimer on debut um, in the number 20 jersey. Then Tate McDermott in the 21. Uh, Tom Lyon in the 22. And Dylan Peach will play just his second cap as well. So it's an interesting side. I, I think the box will be looking at the side and thinking we've got to really, you know, 
put these guys to bed. You know, it's just not an Australian side that should be beating the swimming box. That that is just the facts. You know, you look at the experience, you look at the quality, it's a mismatch. And uh, yes, it's a stadium where we haven't had a lot of success, but it's a mismatch. And, you know, what I think a lot of swimming box fans sometimes get tired of is, is seeing a game on paper where we are so much got so much more quality, but then maybe that doesn't translate on the field. This weekend, we needed to translate. We needed to put these guys to bed early. You know, young teams, mentally, that's where you've got the edge. So you go and put, you know, two, three tries in the first half, and this team could potentially crumble. You know, that's what we've got to try and do. We've got to be ruthless. I think I want to see a ruthlessness coming into the box this weekend that we might not have potentially seen before. Uh, let me know what you think of this team down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you soon.